Well, I think uh, there are two areas, really. One is that when children do disclose and when the authorities know, whether it's police or social services know, that a child has been abused, I think the public at large think that automatically that child is given therapy and support. And that is absolutely not the case. Um, very often, the children and their families are left to struggle on. And I would just like to say that this Letting the Future In, the service that we're running in Jersey, is so transformational, so helpful, not just for the child, but for the child's family, but is not getting enough referrals. So there is still a lot of silence surrounding abuse and a lot of stigma attached. And I would say to any families watching this who really feel that a child has been hurt by the abuse, because inev inevitably they are, and needs the kind of therapy that we can provide, do talk to your social worker, talk to police, talk to social services, and get yourself referred to this excellent service, which is new. So I think the other area is when a child is not actually able to ask for help. And there I would say, there's always Childline. 0800 1111, free, confidential, open 24 seven, and very importantly, not answered here in Jersey, but answered on the mainland. So the person that answers the phone and helps the child is not going to identify you, won't know who you are. You can trust Childline. Tell us everything and we will do our best to help. We won't intervene. We won't destroy your life. We will listen and we will move you to a place of safety at your pace. Charities clearly are, are great at empowering children, and, mm. but, but the government, though, has admitted that in the wake of the Jersey Care Inquiry, it has been very slow to progress changes, improvements. What, in your view, would be the key improvements that be, need to be made as a matter of urgency? Well, I think the first thing that Jersey has done is to recognise the problem. When I was last here, I was talking to adult survivors who had experienced so much suffering as children particularly in the care of the state, but nobody was listening to them at all. They felt that they were submerged, they felt that Jersey didn't want to know, that Jersey was creating this picture of a, a perfect island, sunlit, full of rich people, and the reality for them was very, very different. Well, now the inquiry has had its report. People are listening. Are they listened quickly enough? Are they changing systems? Well, I think it's really helpful that you've got a children's commissioner. She's independent, she's not part of the system, and I'm told you can't say no to her. I'm told she's a force to be reckoned with. So that's very good. But the other thing is, I think we have to recognize that when you create a dustbin for children you don't want to know about, and very often children in care fall into that category. It's too difficult. If you build high walls, if you draw the curtains, then bad things happen. So you've got to let the sunshine in. We want as many people as possible to be in touch with children who are being looked after, to recognize they play a part in children's lives, whether it's the teachers, the neighbors, the parents of friends, be aware Every child matters and every child is all our responsibility. You mentioned the Children's Commissioner. Some mm. critics have said that actually she, she is a bit like a lion without teeth, that, that she has limited powers. I mean, she mm. can't directly hire more social workers. She can't fire people who are failing children. Mm. So do you think that actually she does have enough direct power to make real change here in Jersey? It's very difficult to hire more social workers when there aren't more social workers available. I mean, that's true in the mainland as well as here. You know, there's a, a, a terrible shortage of social workers. So that's a problem which I recognise. But I think she's just got to make a noise. She's got to use you. She's got to come and sit in this chair. She's got to say, you know, there's bad work being done somewhere, if it is. But I, my daughter trained as a social worker in the mainland, and I think most people who go into social work only want to do the best for children and families. So it's better to empower them, build on their skills, and let them do the work they're trained to do, rather than point the finger of blame. Because when you always blame people for what you claim is bad work, it's sometimes that they haven't been given the resources and they aren't given the training they need. Away from, from social work and the like, I just want to talk about this concept of the family unit. Um, 
charities who work here specifically with families as a whole mm. actually say in Jersey children's services are too narrow. They don't focus enough on support for parents. Mm. How important do you feel that is, is to help vulnerable parents who, let's face it, there's no manual for parenting. Well, here's the good news. We've got a project called Baby Steps, which we have tried, evaluated and proved works, which has been carried on in the NSPC Centre. But from the autumn, it's going to stop because the Jersey States is taking it on. And they're going to make it available, not just to vulnerable parents, but to all parents. Because we know you are about to discover that having a baby in your life changes everything. Among other things, it changes your relationships. Instead of whispering love words to each other, you know, you, you just don't sleep at all. You shout at each other about the chores that need to be done. You blame each other for the nappy that needs changing that hasn't been done. Things will change in your life. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> it's, it's terrific as well, but it's stressful. It's tough, yeah. It's tough. So Baby Steps is now going to be available to every new parent. And among the things they will be able to do is talk about the impact pregnancy has on a relationship, let alone the arrival of a new baby. Yeah. And reading what you saw in the film was me reading some of the thank you letters it really does make a difference it frees you up to talk about your own feelings i had postnatal depression i didn't know i was going to get it it frightened me i turned into someone if you asked me how i was i would burst into tears i didn't know how long it would last you know it frightened my husband as well it wasn't the esther that he knew so i think there are changes but the good news is that Jersey States has recognised this and has decided to fund this programme. So what we're hoping is that the NSPCC here will be able to move on to a different new programme. And once again, if it really works here, and it's always very specific to what the community here needs, then Jersey States will look at that too. And finally, having visited the island and seen mm. it for yourself and learnt a bit about the reality of life for families, has anything particularly surprised or concerned you? Well, I think life can be quite tough here. I mean, if you come here on holiday or a flying visit like mine, you see the sunshine and the beauty and you know there's a lot of rich people here. What you don't hear about is the family struggling to make a living, so parents are taking on, you know, not just one job, but two or three jobs. They may not actually meet each other. It may be ships that pass the night because, you know, they're, they're taking on parenting, parenting duties as well as working. And I think um, there's a lot going on here that um, was new to me, and it's not quite the simple, easy life that I assumed it was. No, indeed. Well, it sounds like you've learned a lot about, uh, about Jersey and we do look forward to your next visit. But for now, it's Dave So Esther. do I. <laughs> so do I. Thank you so much for your time today. And you've got a lot to look forward to. Enjoy. Yes, yes. I might be phoning, phoning you for advice <laughs> on that point, but thank you very much for coming in. Pleasure.